the dinosaurs once solitary creatures have banded together roaming the lands in massive herds. These majestic beasts have also taken to laying eggs in nests scattered across the map, adding a new layer of danger and excitement to our survival journey. No longer can dinosaurs be tamed the usual way by knocking them out and shoving up meat to tame them. This is the Hunted, known as one of Ark's most difficult mods out there, and I'm gonna try to defeat all of Fjordr's bosses in 100 days. Anyhow, let's get on with the show, so friends sit back and relax, grab yourself something and enjoy the show. So, I spawned in on the beach and I started punching a tree. I opened up my inventory and noticed how nerfed my character was. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What? I was gonna make myself a stone pick, but that took like forever. I was slowly getting killed by the harsh cold while my pick was still well, being made. I died from cold. Interesting. Then I spawned in next to some early boxes of loot. loot that gave me access to some metal tools. Yeah. Either way, I started making a bunch of clothes because of the cold. But it took a very long time to make them. Then I made one of these eco camping bags, which was a necessity for me so I could work on getting a tent and a sleeping bag. I put down my campfire and I went out for something to kill. I managed to find a baby that I killed for its meat. Not weird at all, right? Right? Bruh, okay, I can do this forever. But yeah, back at base, I made a cooking pot from the hunting mod instead, since it has more slots than a campfire, and then suddenly a dildo came for me in the middle of everything, but luckily I finished the crafting in time and then I killed it. So, in the hunted you have to go through some kind of interface of each creature whenever you wanna skin it or take something off it, like it's venom. The speed and the amount to gain can be increased if you put more points into crafting skill, however. After I'd skinned it from its hidden venom, I got back to camp to put down a cooking pot while a dillo started attacking me and Ikiza. The dillo successfully killed Ikiza and I was next in line. <laughs> and then a Troodon appeared oh, out no. of nowhere, knocking me out while the dillo ate my face. <laughs> oh my God. I spawned back in and this time there was a Carno in the camp. What the f It was super aggressive and I tried my best to run away from it. But he just gave up and went for my tent instead. I managed to get up on a couple of rocks just in time oh because there was a terror bird nearby as well who wanted my ugly face. I pulled some hide from my base and I made a bola. Then speared the terror bird for an eternity. He ran away super bloody but I bolted him again then I finished him off with the spears. <laughs> Akisa spawned in her tent and got eaten instantly by the Carno. <laughs> wow. I threw a few oh, spears at the Carno, so he ran away with his tail between his I legs. Then I decided to oh, go skin the Terrorbird only to be eaten by a dealer that I managed to kill somehow. Then the Carno swooped by oh, for hello, the easy Carno. kill. Huh. I spawned back in, grabbed my items, and I killed the nearby dealer feasting on my corpse. While I was skinning the bird, I broke my legs due to cold. You gotta love arc mechanics, they are great, I love them so much. The next day, Akiza proposed we should work on getting a raft to get off this beach. I was gonna go help her kill some raptors when one of them just appeared out of nowhere. Oh, what the hell? I didn't see that raptor coming! Akiza had killed a few of them, so I helped her skinning them for their hide so we could get the hell out of here. Back at base, while I was cooking up some meat, an aloe appeared out of nowhere. Like, are you kidding me? Oh no! Why? I managed to swim away from it, so I went to help the keys I continue killing dinos for hide. Did you find it? I hoped the aloe would walk away from the campsite, but he was munching on our structures. He wouldn't leave. This was his home. <laughs> I was desperate and I tried luring it away from the camp. After a few deaths and tries, we managed to make him run away from the campsite. For now. The next day, Akiza had made the raft for us, so I loaded it up with our trash. Then we sailed a bit further down the island where we found the pterodon nest with its mom. I bolad and then I killed the mom in the nest. 
So, to get the fertilized egg from the nest, you have to go through the interface again and search the nest. Then the egg will just pop out that you will have to incubate and raise. But before we headed out, I had to grab some nearby metal for our journey. We didn't quite leave yet, cause we had to kill some pengus nearby for some polymer, that would come handy later. But when I was plucking this one's feathers, I got attacked by the same aloe what? from before. He's back. He followed us somehow. I fend the aloe off the raft and I got my revenge finally. Towards day 4 I made a shotgun and a bit of gunpowder for bullets I would need for now. I had made a few bullets then I went on and killed the turtle and descaled it. I then scaled off a few other dinos nearby that were already dead. We had planned on going to Asgard, so we had to go to the portal room. Must be some kind of way up. I remembered seeing paste here once, so I went down to the river to grab a bit of paste from the beaver dams. No! I got back to my body and I recovered my things, then I ran back up to the teleporter and saw some maywings on the oh. way. He's running away. I didn't know if the mod had changed them too, since we had no access to an awesome spyglass yet. So back into raft, I crafted up a boat since we're in desperate need of crystal. So I went over to a spot where I know there is crystal on Fjordr. On day 6, I was appreciating the gorgeous sky on Fjordr while rowing all the way to the volcano. I only went over here to grab a bit of oil since this is a very common area where to find it. Then I was back at the mainland, so I picked up a few beaver dams before heading to our new base location. The next day I was grappling over the rivers looking for silica pearls, but nothing, I couldn't find anything. But later in the morning I came across a river filled with silica pearls for electronics. After I picked up a bit of silica pearls, I decided to head back to my boat to move it a bit closer to the castle, since I had resources on it. Uh, why is there a million dimorphodons flying towards me? Then I was suddenly getting chased by a flock of dimorphodons and I was desperately trying to get away. <sighs> oh, can I go away? Oh my god. I made it back to the nice. boat, safe and sound. I scouted another pterodon nest on the beach, so I went to shore, killed the mom, and I took the egg. So I decided to try taking a shortcut, but when I got closer, I noticed it wasn't one. Then a spino came over and killed me. I tried again and again getting back to my body, and it was just pure death. It was now day 8, and I still hadn't recovered my corpse. But when I spawned in, I was burning for some weird reason. What am I burning? There was apparently a human NPC shooting fire arrows at me. But all I had to do was smile and wave to get her to stop. This time when I got back to my body, the spino seemed uninterested in me. Probably because I wasn't within the reach of the nest anymore. I made the climb up back to base with all the resources. It was quite heavy. Then I started making some electronics and then an awesome teleporter, finally. On day 9, I went around the base cleaning up the area from all the rubble and trees. Then I took my boat to the swamp to harvest a few corpses since they can drop organic polymer, so we had secured that at least. On day 10, Akiza was raising all of the babies while I was farming a bunch of wood with my new chainsaw. On day 11, we discovered a human village nearby that we raided for resources. There was a glitchy human here as well that we just killed. He's so glitchy. Because we do not take any prisoners or survivors. I was gonna help Akiza retrieve an Arja egg, but its mom was still there and she did so much damage to me despite me wearing flat. But we got the egg luckily. Oh, that's a spicy Arja. That Arja did so much damage, I think we need weapons now. Crossbows are not gonna be enough for us. The next day I farmed a few high rich metal nodes near the base because I wanted to get some shotguns made. We were in dire need of more metal, so I decided to travel out to a mountain where I know there is a lot of high rich metal. And while I was parachuting to get closer faster, I saw a giga who took an interest in me. Hello? Oh really, it's gonna catch up to me. Ouch, he broke my armor. 
I took the Anki with me and I farmed as much metal as possible. I almost forgot to fill you guys in on this, but in the Hunted, you can make these nests to incubate fertilized eggs, but they need some kind of special resource to be powered, however. On day 13, I went over yep. to the swamp again to grab a bit of polymer from the decaying carcasses. But as soon as I reached the land, I got jumped by a capro. Ah! I immediately netgunned them both and I killed one. Oh my god! I'm dead! I was running around for a bit looking for these corpses, but I ran into a human that killed Ouch. me with his fire arrow. Oh my god. And I made it back to the swamp and I found a corpse and I harvested it up real nicely. Stupid frog, leave me alone. Oh my god, look at that tongue. A bit later, I put up some forges in a cave that would make it easier for me to just melt metal into ingots. The next day, I was still farming stuff, but this time it was more silica pearls since I was working towards making a cam bench. And then I took the Anki out to farm a bit more metal because we always run out of metal somehow. On day 15, I was in Asgard looking for dinos and I came across a scorpion that could be harvested for some venom. The venom is for making narcotics and we weren't able to make any trank arrows because of it. I had three trank arrows from raiding the human village from before. So I netgunned this maywing I saw and I knocked it out. I was really hoping we could use this maywing because in the hunted, the saddles are not an easy thing to make since you need some kind of implants to make them or get them from drops. Well, at least the hunted creatures requires it. The Maywing was the only one we could make that didn't require any implants because we did see the saddle in the engram list. Back in Asgard, I spotted a 150 Maywing, so I netgunned it, knocked it out and tamed it. A bit later, I decided to head down to the Magmasur cave since I wanted to beat the black pearls for a mining drill. It would be more convenient for me than using the Anki. Oh no! On day 16, I made the mining drill and then I went out to farm a bit of metal, flint and stones. Also, I almost forgot to mention this, but we have the Eco Viking mod installed, so Akiza put down our Viking Lodge, which would be our home. Then I flew down to the Aberia to grab a bit of blue crystal for a glider suit. And I came across the red drop with an ascendant pump shoddy. That was insane. Afterwards, I went out to help Akisa skin a few dinos for hide, since it takes a while to skin them. There was a nest nearby too that I could collect for an implant, but Akisa had already taken it, but yeah, that's how you can I get implants. On day 17, I went down to the Genesis space area to see if I could find any light pets, but they might have been removed since I last played Fjordr. After lots of searching, I came across an Allosaurus nest, so I collected the egg and I killed the Allos. Then a bit later, I grabbed the metal from the cave, then I went back to base to make the industrial forge, finally. So the next day, I made a reactivated delta implant so I could make the saddle for the Deinonychus we had. Then I ran into a problem where we needed something called core fiber that I had no clue how to get. So we put this on hold for now until we could figure it out later. But yeah, I was gonna work on getting a chem bench instead, but we were lacking out a bit of polymer so I went back to swamp to grab a bit of it. Before the day was ending, I finally managed to make the chem bench and I placed it down. I went out to the ocean to look for anglerfish to kill since we needed angler gel for the large nest to hatch some gargantuan eggs, like the alice for example but I didn't find any. On day 20, I killed off a few sheep outside the base for some raw mutton. Sheep sheep! Yummy. Then I crafted up a bit of gunpowder so we could have some more shotgun bullets eventually. On day 21, I had started making a greenhouse since the crops were a necessity for making the kibble. And yeah, I ran out of paste again when making the greenhouse so I gathered a bit from the beaver dam once again. Then I also grabbed a bit of crystal, since I was already out. Then I had finally completed the greenhouse. All we gonna need now was some dung beetles and we were good. Akisa was out grabbing the dung beetles to the base so I just had to tame them. I had to put up some beer barrels too for the gardener. 
The next day, I went out killing an anglerfish for some angler gel. We had finally ran out of it, so we were in desperate need for it now. I came across a dead Giga with its nest, but before I was gonna go grab that, I wanted to take its heart. No, like literally, his heart. But boy oh boy oh boy, it was way too slow to collect. But yeah, so I spotted a max level car shark, but I discovered it was impossible to tame them in the hunted, because the dinos in this mod doesn't seem to eat any corpses. <sighs> I was attempting to pick up a beaver dam for pace, but I got almost killed, so I just left it instead. Do you guys remember that I needed something called core fiber? Apparently, you need to look for something called a cocodru plant, and you plant it in the greenhouse, and that's how you get the core fiber. According to Kiza, we got a cocodru from a jerboa that she swore that it shat out. And then I went out looking for a dodo nest for its egg, since we needed it for making some basic kibble. I had killed a dino nearby, then apparently tamed up a fjord hawk. Bruh. Then I traversed back to the Giga, and I collected its nest egg and three alpha deactivated implants right before I died. The alpha implant is basically for making a Giga saddle, Rex, you know, big creatures. <sighs> yep. It was gonna take about 5 hours real time to incubate the Giga egg, so we put it in the fridge for now until we can make an S plus hatchery, because I am not waiting 5 hours for it to incubate. Either way, I went out for a Thersino egg since it would help us out greatly gathering fiber for various items. So I had to take the Anki out again to farm a lot of metal once again. God damn it. So I discovered we didn't have any pelt in the base for making the gardener, so I had to go out and kill a few mammoths for pelt. When I was out grabbing another aloe egg, I got attacked by the aloes and almost died to them. Unfortunately, I lost a duck, but I got away with a sliver of health left. I couldn't be asked waiting for my health to regen, so I just killed myself. So for people who haven't played the hunted before, the health and stamina regen is extremely slow in this mod. It doesn't matter how many health brews you shog down, you're still gonna be very limited to how fast you can heal. I took one of the aloes to Asgard and he did literally 65 damage. Bruh. Oh my god. <laughs> the only way I could see us defeating the bosses on this map is by doing mutation breeding, which we will do later in this playthrough. On day 27, I killed an alpha raptor with my shotgun. Getting the stuff off it took a really long time, like no joke. I think I stared at my screen for almost 15 minutes. I went out looking for a turtle nest to collect its cocoa drip to increase the production in our greenhouse. On day 29, I went out to grab a bit of spiner cells and the nest egg that I would probably never use, but the alpha implant could come handy however. The base looks a bit more different from before. Akisa had been very busy tidying up the place a notch. Ah, oh, Lord Jesus. On day 31, I gathered a bit more pace from beaver dams, then I went to Asgard to grab even more. I was actually setting up a breeding area for the aloe since Akisa wanted to start on mutation breeding ASAP. I had to put up a staircase also, so we could walk up easier to the breeding pan. It took me until day 32 to finish the staircase. But straight after that, I went back to continue on the breeding area. It was gonna be super simple, stone walls and a rooftop. Well, to solve the cementing paste issue, I was gonna go and tame some acatinas that could passively produce it in the terminal. I was getting quite annoyed gathering paste from beaver dams. Oh, they're called- OH MOTHER- I saw that there was a rex nest up as well on the scanner, so I tracked its nest down since I wanted the beta implant for the aloes. Like any oh, other man. creature, I wanted the stuff from it and it took forever. Man, for fun! It's pushing me away! Yeah. Uh, I didn't get the... Screw this brawler! <laughs> oh, that works. <laughs> I was quite tired of the stylus table. We were literally using it as a storage table, so then I made a vault instead. 
Then I was able to make a bit of kibble so we could go and tame some sheep babies. I feel like I'm struggle bussing. This is kind of obvious though. When dinos don't have a nest, they will have babies roaming nearby you passively tame with kibble. So I tamed them and brought them back home so they could grow up and I could shear them for some wool. A bit later, I tamed up a few queen bees so we could put them in the terminals to get a bit of honey. Akisa had finally put up the aloes for breeding and boy, my FPS was dying. How much FPS do I have here? 13 FPS! I finished up the roof of the breeding so no Argus would get in there and kill the aloes. Then I went out to collect more spino cells for more beta implants. Once again, I was farming organic polymer since the case I wanted the S plus egg incubator. The case I was making progress on the breeding on day 36, but this looks so lame though. Imagine going into future bosses with these current stats, it's gonna be impossible. I was tearing up from seeing these single digit numbers. I was then able to make the S plus incubator for Akisa, so she didn't have to use the hunting nests anymore, since they were technically worthless. The range was like one block of cheese to incubate one egg. Uh, that's a bit awkward, but apparently the S plus item collector guy couldn't harvest the hunted sheep, so I had to do it myself, the OG way. I was able to make some high level kibble now, so whenever I wanted to tame something big like a Mosa baby, I would be able to do it now. This is kind of funny. The prime fish you get from the silica pearls can't be cooked or used for anything. Dude, how long does it take to cook this fish meat? What? Huh? No way! I then killed a few moses so I could chop them up for some prime meat since I needed it for kibble. I went over to Rexness to kill the parents for armor plates and arms. I kept getting interrupted by a lot of things. <laughs> Men were fun. Oh my god! I killed the last of the terror birds and then this happened. Oh my god! It took a while but I got an egg and I tamed up a baby. A bit later I tracked down a human that I became friends with. I had given them proper armor and I gave them some names after a few friends. Then a bit later I took the Theresina out to the swamp to farm a bit of fiber and flowers. I got back to the base and I caught Johan in the act. What are they doing here? What is Johan doing? I think he's like stuck there behind her. Oh! So I decided to head over to one of the dungeons and grab some runestones and an artifact. Okay so I just want to explain something here real quick. So we had decided to play the hunted on Fjordr and defeat its sponsors here. But what we didn't take to account that none of the alphas drops you runestones in this mod. So I had Akisa put up random boxes with simple spawners with runestones in most of the dungeons. She never revealed it to me where they were so I had to look around for them. But either way I went further into the cave and I acquired the hunter artifact. I decided to head over to the molten cavern dungeon and this one has two artifacts. Clever and immune. When I was in this dungeon, I was really close of dying to rabies, so I panicked teleported home. I decided to walk across the edge to kill myself, because the health regen in this mod sucks. I don't wanna deal with this. I managed to get the artifact pack, and I walked around looking for boxes of runestones, but I found nothing. So I went and grabbed the other artifact, Clever, instead. A bit further away, I flew over to the third dungeon, the Frozen Fortress, for the Skylord artifact. There was a crap ton of Perlovias in here that would probably kill me, so I took it very carefully. I saw that there was a few anglerfish in this lake here, so I just killed them for their angler gel. I proceeded walking further into the cave, but one of the Perlovias hit the stun and I fell into the pit. Second try of getting the Skylord artifact. And I died to fall damage this time. Oh, it happened again. I had made an RPG to try to get the Perlovias out of the ground so I could bait them into the pit. After it was clear, I grabbed the artifact and runestones and I was out of there. No more cave hunting for me today. 
On day 41, I logged into my first Blood Moon ever seen. This is the worst day of doing absolutely anything in the mod. No, 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 no. It turns all of the normal dinos into alphas. I wanted to see the ingredients for summoning the dragon, so I flew into the mines of Moria to check Let's it out. Let's see. Dragon needs Hati and Skull. Okay, so that means Broodmother only needs one, and Dragon needs two relics. I killed Elementria, and I apparently discovered a new seed you can plant. I don't know what it's for, I actually did never use it. So I went out searching for scorpions, because they can passively produce venom I need for making narcotics. Afterwards, I wanted to try my luck in getting some decent viren eggs, so I went down to the Asgard Trench to grab a few lightning viren eggs. I found a couple of decent ones, so I dropped them off at base for Kisa to handle since she only wanted to spend her time now mutation breeding dinos. Not long after, I got over to Vanaheim to grab some poison viren eggs and managed to find a 185 egg that would come handy later. So I wanted to make a few exceptional saddles that is for the aloes, but we were lacking out a lot of the keratin. So the next day I went out killing a few ankylos and grabbing keratin from them. Then for rest of the day, I basically just stood by and watched the beautiful sky of Fjordr, trying to come up with an idea to work on next. On day 46, I decided to go after some legit Danon eggs, because the Danons we had didn't feel legit since they had a lot of levels already, and the dinos in the Hunted start at level 1. Next day, I went over to find these decaying corpses, since they can be looted for implants. I was going for one of these blue drops, and there were an army of Deinonychus who wanted to eat my face. On day 48, I was just killing understand. off a few spiners for their sales, so I could reactivate the beta implants for Alos Adults. Hmm. That is taking a while. Jesus. It's been like... a minute almost. And then I was back to collecting more Deinonychus eggs, so I could start mutation breeding them for the bosses. All there was to do was incubate the eggs and raise the babies, then breed them over and over until I have enough clean females to start the mutation process. We were trying to figure out if I could breed the Deinons at the church. My duck barely fits in there. I mean, I had a race to the purple drop, but I lost and I died to oh. some lava. What are you gonna put on your duck? Why? So that he can see you better. Bruh, what is this? What have you done to the duck? This looks... <laughs> How peculiar. Oh. He's educated. A bit later, I came across another aloe saddle from a drop which was huge. This was huge for us. So, if we were gonna do the bosses, it would be a good time to get a UD, and this is like the first nest I've ever seen since this playthrough started. I killed the parents, I grabbed the eggs and the Yudi lungs. On day 51 and 52, I was out killing spiners for some more sales for reactivated implants. I had found a rex nest, so I quickly disposed of the parents and I took their child. Then I skinned the parents for their arms and hide. There was also a baby pig stuck in a branch that I gave cable to and then he was my bacon. And before the day was over, I farmed a bunch of metal again, since we just ran out of it. I had no clue how! <laughs> the very next day, I found a village filled with NPCs that caused a lot of server lag. There was just too many of them for me to kill, so I brought in the big boy. I had returned with the monk a Giga, so he could slaughter the whole village and I could raid them for their supplies. So on day 54, I had an epiphany. If I were to explore the ocean and perhaps kill some of the aquatic fish, I would have to have some sort of area to raise all the fish in one safe spot. I was basically building the water pan for the fish. On day 56, the water pan was ready to be used, so I went back to base to pick up my Danons, because they were done maturing. So all I had to do now was to put them up in the Deinonica church for mutation breeding. But I wasn't quite there yet since I had to breed them for a good while until I had about 100 clean females. 
I didn't do anything particularly interesting on day 57, just cracking eggs for more Dane on babies. I was getting tired of shearing the sheep all the time, so I put them in a terminal to generate wool instead. <laughs> The reason why I did it is because the S plus item collector didn't work on the sheep. On day 58, I went out to kill a few more Rexes for armor plates so I could make the rest of the Allo saddles for the boss fights. I then made the remaining saddles, so all we had to do now was breed the dinos, gather tributes and the remaining artifacts. I came across a Giga Nest with its parents dead, so I quickly joined the egg. I didn't see anything dangerous nearby, so I went to get the skin off the Giga, but then I found the killer. It was an R Giga who almost, almost killed me. Then I got back to the Giga corpses and I grabbed the skin and the hearts. Yeah, that took a long time, especially since there are Gigas at level 250. Oh my freaking god. On day 60, I just farmed a lot of oil for making gasoline. Then it was time to go back into the salt mines. Well, canyon in this case. But before I was ending it for today, I had to go get myself a baby IKEA shark from the ocean. And yeah, kill off some bad fishes too. There was even a baby mosa nearby. I just couldn't let it go. It was missing its parent, so I tamed it immediately. Then I left them all in the water pan to grow up. I also opened a few eggs before turning off for the day. And like I said before, I'm only saving the females. The next day, I logged in with a bunch of eggs in the hatchery. Nice. I had already managed to get one of the mutations, so we were literally starting now. I then went to the boss caves and I put down teleporters, so it would be easier for us to get over there. When the time is there. Teleporter for you. And the teleporter for you. I had to go out and farm lots of meat for the hungry dinos we had, especially the Danons since I was gonna raise over a hundred females. So on day 64, I was basically just breeding. Well, letting the Danons breed for more eggs. We had completely forgot about an eco mod we had installed. It was the eco primordial saddles. Okay, that does look kind of cool though. Come on, take a look how good the Allosaurus looks. Oh my god! It looks so good. I love this mod so much, you had no idea. Holy! I told you they looked really cool. Now this is something, this is a great saddle. Then I threw out a lot of the females to prep for mutation breeding. This was gonna be a long process though. Here. And they're all gonna stay up there. So on day 66, we noticed that the T-Rex arms and other tributes had a spoil timer before it would turn to an actual trophy. To rectify this problem, we put down 20 boxes and all I had to do was split the tributes into each box. And that would help it with spoiling them faster instead of one by one. I figured, if we were gonna defeat Steinbjörn in Jotunheim, which is one of the coldest zones in Fjordr, we were gonna need an otter. So we set our eyes to go out and look for an otter. To tame these otters, they don't want ordinary fish like Vanilla Ark. They want some salmon roe, which you can get from the salmon's inventory when you kill them. Oh, it only requires one? Oh, that's easy. On day 67 and 69. Nice. It was basically all about the breeding. The next day I logged in, the tributes had finally all spoiled. I had also upgraded my hatchery capability here now. Like 30 AC units in a small room with the hatchery to get all of these eggs hatched. The egg incubator got to be tiring because you have to manually put in 10 eggs each time. Either way, we had decided to do the cave for the Skylord artifact. And right at the entrance, I got perloviad, but I survived somehow. 
Why are you just staring at me? Ah! The red drop had a very nice car show saddle, but it was just too bad you couldn't tame them though. I got perlovia once again, but I was so close to falling into the pit. Oh, I survived! My heart shook a little bit, not gonna lie. <laughs> that does not look good, Akiza. Oh! I'm alive! How did you survive? So I didn't have an RPG this time with me. So I threw down my Maywing to try baiting the Perlovias yeah, out of the ground. And guess what? Yeah, it worked. <laughs> oh. What? How did you die? I fell. Get my otter. LOL. No! It's not <laughs> The next day, we went down to the dungeon for the artifact of the strong. The cave is amazing looking, oh! dude, but there were way too many bugs in here, though. <gasps> what the hell? I don't think we can fight against that, Mike! No, oh, but that can. It's a swarm! Then we got back to base, and my hatch over was completely full. Oh my god, 300 eggs. After I got the eggs hatched and such, we went down into the swamp dungeon to grab the next artifact brute. The cave is known for being very poisonous, so a gas mask was required here. There was also a few dismodus we had to dispose oh god, of, me. but it wasn't too hard. Oh my god, it does so much damage. The artifact, however, was on the other side Bruh. of the cliff, so we just grappled our way over. Straight after that, we went to the Molten Cave to grab two more artifacts, and it went pretty smoothly, actually. Whoa! Then we went to the cave to grab the immune artifact, and it was relatively easy to get. Because I tried to do this alone before. The Hunt artifact was next in line to grab. It was so much easier to do this one now, with the keys around. The Making artifact a, massive a was a bit trickier to get though, yeah, since it was I'm only accessible from underwater massive. in the cave. Started then we had to climb our way up to the cave, which was pretty far up. There was a few dismodus in the cave that we had to clear from immediately, since they do so much bleed damage. And yeah, it wasn't what I expected, but this was the labyrinth <gasps> dungeon. Oh, but it was pretty yeah. easy to figure it out, however. There's a one here. Yeah. Oh, the, I bet the numbers tell us the order we have to press the buttons in. I got the combo wrong, which almost okay. killed me. But it was green, yellow, purple, and then blue. We're not good at this. And then yellow, then purple, and then blue. Easy. <sighs> I didn't watch my footing and I died in a trap. I got back to the dungeon and I got chased by the smoders and suddenly I was back at my base somehow. Please, Ark, come on. Oh, wait! Where am I? I feel like I got teleported. I'm back at base! I managed to get to the door again, I put in the combination, and I catched up to Akiza. Okay, what is there was another uh, combination, one, I put the, it in and green. the door opened for the massive artifact. I, yeah, I already, I already put it down, it's green, purple, yellow, blue. There was a second water cave entrance to another dungeon I had to swim to. The forgotten caverns which had the artifact of the cunning. Oh god. It had a lot of bugs to clear from, and then a few traps, but nothing too dangerous, really. There was also a pretty cool area down here with the black pearl. Then it was time to get the last artifact, which was the Devourer. Unfortunately, this was an extra hard challenge for me, because I have a water phobia, and I wasn't having a good time getting the artifact. I just swam fast towards it, and I grabbed the artifact. 
But that's basically it for all the artifacts, so we're ready for the Gamma boss fights now. Oh, God. So for the day 74 until 76, it was all about breeding the Danons to be ready for the bosses on day 77. Okay, so this is kind of a quick update here. Oh my god, it's a lag over there. Stupid Danonicus over there. So, this is how, this is how much we have so far. 10 HP, 10 damage, 10 weight, 10 stamina. Now, all I have to do is work on getting a pair for them, each of the stats, and then I'll merge them together. That we will use for the Gamma boss. And hopefully, they are enough for it. The Alos are pretty much ready, at least now. Now we are gonna work towards the final stage. So I had the HP melee on the table there. And I have the rest of the stats I need to combine them all together. Which we will use for the Gamma boss. Okay, so now we finally got the final merge here that we we're gonna use for Gamma bosses. As you can see, 10 HP, stamina, weight, and melee. It was now day 77, and all the dinos were ready for the boss fight. So I grabbed the rune stones and we went over to the B boss. There were a few hibernating bears in the cave we had to get rid of. Then we threw out all of the dinos and summoned in Bela. The fight was relatively good, not easy at all though with the dinos we had. We did not take into account that we would need a gas mask for this fight, because Akisa died to some kind of poison attack. Oh, it shot poison at me. Oh god. Well, we did kill it after a while and got the Bela relic. The relics are for summoning the three island bosses. Then it was time for the second mini boss, Steinbjörn. He was a super tanky bear and honestly, he took a while because of his damage reduction. I noticed how hungry my Yuri got after doing the courage roar after a few times. Yikes. In the middle of the fight, the Yuri passed out from hunger since I didn't have anything on me, so I jumped up on my Danon quickly. We finally killed him after a while and we got the Stainbjorn relic. We actually gave it until the very next day so the dinos could heal because the dinos took quite the beating from Stainbjorn. But then, it was time for Hati and Skull and they were super easy to kill for the relics. Alright, so the time had finally come down to taking down our first island boss, the Megapithecus. This was literally my first time doing any of the island bosses on Fjordr. The arena was slightly different from the island one, but it was really good looking in my opinion. The Dynamicus were the real monsters in this fight. The bleed damage is a boss killer for sure. Then we head over to the Broodmother summoning area and activated a portal. Like the monkey, the Denonicus are essential team for doing any damage to the bosses. It's like they were made for the hunted honestly. I love their bleed damage, I just can't get enough of it. On day 79, it was time to take down the hardest boss from the island, the dragon. The fire breath he does is percentage based, which I was super nervous about. Some of them got stuck in the lava. Oh my god! I could definitely see it. The Dernonicus was doing all of the big boy work, and then we finally killed it and got the last trophy for the Fenrir boss fight. The dinos took a real beating, so we just had to let them heal up for the next day. The time had finally come to take down the Fenrir Gamma boss. Never mind. He started blasting me with his breath attack, and he had abilities that froze me completely. Oh god. I'm in trouble here. I am not doing good on Yuri. 
I got kicked off the boss by one of his attacks and I immediately jumped off on an aloe. The dude was so close of dying and Akisa soul bullet right before it was about to die. That was so close dude. But yeah, that was the gamma Fenrir and since we figured we had 20 more days left of this mod, we were gonna work towards the beta and eventually the alpha nice. fight. Mm. That looks cool. I decided to go out into the ocean and kill a few sea creatures with their trophies since beta and alpha need a lot from the ocean. I do not like the ocean, especially squids. Ugh. I had returned to the ocean since I had to go back to base to repair my scuba kit. But then there was an alpha squid coming after me that I did not see. Oh no! Okay. Where's my plucky duck? I'm leaving! I'm leaving! I'm leaving! I'm leaving! Was there uh, three squids there? There was an alpha! Oh. That's worse than three squids. 156k HP! Where's my shark? Bro, come back! I'm being followed by a million sharks here! Oh, are you serious? I see an alpha mosa! Well, the alpha squid wasn't there anymore, so I gathered all of the things I needed. This new day, I decided to go out and farm the remaining stuff for Alpha, since we already had enough for the beta fights. I continued farming tributes between breeding sessions, so I would come back after a few minutes and check out if I got the mutation or not, then I would go back out. I had a timer for whenever I was supposed to go back out. Shut up, phone. Then I was gonna go back out again, and these were the last ones I would have to farm for the alpha fight. I split all of them into each individual box to make them spoil faster. After I was done with that, I grabbed the dinos and I went to kill the bee boss again. We probably went a bit overboard with the dinos on this one. Then straight after that, it was time to do the Stainbjorn fight. It was a lot easier now since the dinos had a few more levels into them than before. Rage buff. And before the day was over, we summoned in the last ones, Hati and Skull. Skull has been defeated. The next day, we fought the beta Megapithecus. The Danons was put to good work, the tense admutations did a good job damaging the boss, but the Yudi however was still useless since the food depletion was a joke on it. Oh no, my personal Danonicus died as soon as the boss died, but luckily I had a few more backups left but that was my personal one. Well before the day was over, we decided to do the Broodmother beta and this time I didn't use the UD. I wanted to try out the Danons and see how good they were and yeah, the bleed never disappoints. I think we should just focus on uh, Broodmother. And cleave these. Nice. Take grams. On day 85, we were throwing out 10 Danonicus and 10 Aloes for the dragon boss fight. There was one thing I didn't account for, and that was that we needed 2 Giga Hearts for the alpha fight. I only had one, which was no, for the beta boss in. fight. So get behind him. The Danonicus bleed was pumping out a very high amount of damage. The Alos are pretty good too. They're very good for distracting. We lost a few Dinos during the fight, so this is probably the limit to how far they can go up against beta bosses. Nice. Oh my god. That was difficult. After the boss fight, we went to the oil area on Fjordr to collect some Giga Hearts for the Alpha Dragon fight. And yeah, it is day 86. It took me until day 86 to collect these Giga Hearts. That's how slow this process is and it's incredibly annoying on higher level of creatures. Then back at base, I was back into opening eggs for mutations. What a fun cycle of life for me. On day 87, we were ready to attempt the beta Fenrir. And if we beat this, we will be able to continue working towards the alpha fight. 
I learned my mistake and I brought cable for the duty this time, since it fills up the food really fast, because we could not risk of losing or dying to this boss fight. I kept my distance, courage toward the boss dinos and kept the minions close to me while Akisa killed them. A lot of the damage dealing Danons were dying, and then the boss wasn't taking enough damage, so Akisa ran in to deal damage to him. The allies were really close to dying, so we had no choice. 100k, 100k. Yeah, the, the Danon is doing so much damage, so much damage, so much damage. You could literally see that the Danos was the big G in this fight. Akisa unfortunately died to oh, one of the no, attacks, but her Danon survived. That's all we needed, though. I am the cameraman, and the cameraman never dies in these moments. Yeah, we got it. That was a super close call, but we killed it. So now we could work on breeding and merging the dinos for the alpha fights. <clears throat> okay, this is kind of a quick update how far I have made it. So all of the dinos are ready. So you see here the stat... The melee stat is down here and the weight here. Now all I have to do is wait for this to grow up so I can merge them. We now have the pair of the Deinonychus De merged. So all I gotta do is just let them raise up and then continuously breed them for babies. And then we're ready for the boss. On day 91, I started by basically just throwing out babies for the fights that were to come. We had to do all of the dungeons once again since we had a few artifacts already, but not all of them. So we gathered the artifact of the strong for the alpha fight to begin with. So the next one was to do the brute, but the Kisa was so slow to get to the poison cave so I took the time by throwing out some more boss dinos. <laughs> she looked so confused when she teleported next to my duck. Oh my god. It just took me to your plucky ducky. Oh, hi Mike. <laughs> what are you doing, you fool? <laughs> Either way, I made it to the poison cave and Akiza ran off alone and she died to the Smodus. <laughs> the next cave was, uh, I don't remember the name of it, but it had the immune artifact. I was gonna try grabbing a bit of venom from some dinos too, since we could make some narcotics for health boost then. I quickly went down into the ocean to grab the devourer and I teleported out of there immediately, because the ocean. On day 93, we were working on getting the massive artifact from the labyrinth, so we had to go through the labyrinth again. I ended up dying to some rabies. Then I got back and Akisa died to the trap I died from last time. <laughs> well, we got the artifact and we jumped into the next dungeon for the cunning. Akisa was clearing the dungeon for me, while I was grabbing off venom from all of the creatures. It took a really long time to do this since I wanted a good number of it. Well, I figured it was about time to get an iguanodon since the recipe for the narcotics requires narco berry <laughs> seeds. So I set out to look for an iguanodon nest to grab its egg and then convert the narco berries to seeds. You can apparently do this while the dino is still a baby. I didn't know that. So it was now day 94 and it was time for us to take down the three mini bosses again and Bela was the first one. We brought the humans for this fight and only Azrael died. We lost one of the great warriors! Afterwards it was time for Stainbjorn. It was pretty hilarious seeing the humans and Pisces going in for the boss fight. Your skull! No! <laughs> no! Oh, there go the rest of them. Oh my god, this is quite a oh. long time though. We tried keeping all of the boss fights to each separate day so the dinos could heal in between the fights. The next day, yeah. we took down Hathi and Skull, so then it was time for the island boss and fights. Skull's out for the camp. Okay, On day 97, we were gonna fight the Megapithecus Alpha. We rode into the arena like champions. The monkey did an insane high number of damage, but we did the same and we took it down. Nice. The Broodmother Alpha was up next, 
The dinos just ran fully into the boss and started dealing lots of damage to her. The Deinonychus bleed did so much damage now. These boss fights wouldn't be possible with the dinos we had before, so it definitely helped with a few more points into damage and health mutations. Awesome! Day 99, the Alpha Dragon was the one I was a bit nervy from, because that breath is no joke. This fight took a while to do though, but we played very carefully and waited for him to actually walk to us this time. Nothing can withstand the Anonicus bleed. Yes! Oh my god! Woohoo! It was now day 100, and I had prepared a lot of kibble for the Yudi and the Pigu. So the game plan was to send in the bacon strips with the Alus, and now we stayed far behind courage roaring the boss dinos. Here is a little problem we discovered from the beta boss fight. When any of the players attack head on or with the gun, the Fenrir boss will target the rider. So we learned from this by staying behind and not using any guns. Bacon's being! Ah, oh, bacon's being eaten! Probably should have sent Piggy into the fray as well. I'm, I'm doing like no damage to that Fenner. Yeah, the boss is uh, taking a lot of uh, Anonicus damage though. You see that? 6k. Yeah. The boss was getting lower and lower, but so were the Alos. It was so close, and then suddenly all of the Danonicus died from the boss in a one single attack. I told the Kesa to get in there and apply a bleed to the boss since that was the only thing that was reliable at this point. Come on! Oh! Alright, we can do it! Alos are so we can do close of dying! Oh my god! No, this is way too difficult! Oh my god! Also for people who are still watching at this point, I have to tell you that Malamar is about to wipe soon for the launch of their new modded overhaul cluster. You can simply join it by clicking on the discord link in my description. They also have a vanilla with sprinkle servers with all of the official maps for you to explore. You might be able to catch me there since I play there from time to time. I have planned on streaming on Twitch for the future for mostly Ark and a bit of other games, so be sure to follow me there if you wanna watch me someday. Alright alright, so now we finally finished the 100 days, so here is my take on the Hunted. It is a great mod for you fanatics out there, but you guys who play modded Ark a lot, I honestly think this is definitely not the number one hardest mod out there. There is only one who takes that place for me, and it's Dino Overhaul X. So if you haven't seen my take on Dino Overhaul X yet, be sure to check the video out. Either way, I hope you all enjoyed my take on The Hunted. So make sure to smash that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.